Hubble's law is the name for the observation in physical cosmology that, objects observed in deep space are found to have a Doppler shift interpretable as relative velocity away from the Earth. This Doppler shift measured velocity, of various galaxies receding from the Earth, is approximately proportional to their distance from the Earth for galaxies up to a few hundred megaparsks away. Hubble's law is considered the first observational basis for the expansion of the universe and today serves as one of the pieces of evidence most often cited in support of the Big Bang model. The motion of astronomical objects due solely to this expansion is known as the Hubble flow. Although widely attributed to Edwin Hubble, the law was first derived from the general relativity equations by George's Lemma registered trademark to in a 1927 article where he proposed the expansion of the universe and suggested an estimated value of the rate of expansion, now called the Hubble constant. Two years later Edwin Hubble confirmed the existence of that law and determined a more accurate value for the constant that now bears his name. Hubble inferred the recession velocity of the objects from their redshifts, many of which were earlier measured and related to velocity by Vesto Slipher in 1917. The law is often expressed by the equation V equals HOD, with HO the constant of proportionality between the proper distance d to a galaxy and its velocity V. The SI unit of HO is R1 but it is most frequently quoted in MPC, thus giving the speed in kilometer per second of a galaxy 1 megaparsk away. The reciprocal of HO is the Hubble time. Observed values. Discovery. A decade before Hubble made his observations, a number of physicists and mathematicians had established a consistent theory of the relationship between space and time by using Einstein's field equations of general relativity. Applying the most general principles to the nature of the universe yielded a dynamic solution that conflicted with the then prevailing notion of a static universe equals FLRW equations equals, in 1922, Alexander Friedman derived his Friedman equations from Einstein's field equations, showing that the universe might expand at a rate calculable by the equations. The parameter used by Friedman is known today as the scale factor which can be considered as a scale invariant form of the proportionality constant of Hubble's law. George's lemma registered trademark to independently found a similar solution in 1927. The Friedman equations are derived by inserting the metric for a homogeneous and isotropic universe into Einstein's field equations for a fluid with a given density and pressure. This idea of an expanding space-time would eventually lead to the Big Bang and steady-state theories of cosmology. Equals Lee Matter's equation equals, in 1927, Two years before Hubble published his own article, the Belgian priest and astronomer Georges Lemma registered trademark to was the first to publish research deriving what is now known as Hubble's law. Unfortunately, for reasons unknown, all discussions of radial velocities and distances were omitted. It is speculated that these omissions were deliberate. According to the Canadian astronomer Sidney Van Denberg, the 1927 discovery of the expansion of the universe by Limata was published in French in a low-impact journal. In the 1931 high-impact English translation of this article a critical equation was changed by omitting reference to what is now known as the Hubble constant. That the section of the text of this paper dealing with the expansion of the universe was also deleted from that English translation suggests a deliberate omission by the unknown translator equals shape of the universe equals, before the advent of modern cosmology, there was considerable talk about the size and shape of the universe. In 1920, the famous Shapley-Curtis debate took place between Harlow Shapley and E. B. D. Curtis over this issue. Shapley argued for a small universe the size of the Milky Way galaxy and Curtis argued that the universe was much larger. The issue was resolved in the coming decade with Hubble's improved observations equals Cepheid variable stars outside of the Milky Way equals, Edwin Hubble did most of his professional astronomical observing work at Mount Wilson Observatory, home to the world's most powerful telescope at the time. His observations of Cepheid variable stars in spiral nebulae enabled him to calculate the distances to these objects. Surprisingly, these objects were discovered to be at distances which placed them well outside the Milky Way. They continued to be called nebulae, and it was only gradually that the term galaxies took over. 
equals combining redshifts with distance measurements equals. The parameters that appear in Habalia Euro unregistered trademark S law, velocities and distances, are not directly measured. In reality we determine, say, a supernova brightness, which provides information about its distance, and the redshift Z equals AI slash I of its spectrum of radiation. Hubble correlated brightness and parameter Z. Combining his measurements of galaxy distances with Besto Slipher and Milton Humerson's measurements of the redshifts associated with the galaxies, Hubble discovered a rough proportionality between redshift of an object and its distance. Though there was considerable scatter, Hubble was able to plot a trend line from the 46 galaxies he studied and obtain a value for the Hubble constant of 500 kmmpc. At the time of discovery and development of Hubble's law, it was acceptable to explain redshift phenomenon as a Doppler shift in the context of special relativity, and use the Doppler formula to associate redshift Z with velocity. Today, the velocity distance relationship of Hubble's law is viewed as a theoretical result with velocity to be connected with observed redshift not by the Doppler effect, but by a cosmological model relating recessional velocity to the expansion of the universe. Even for small z the velocity entering the Hubble law is no longer interpreted as a Doppler effect, although at small z the velocity redshift relation for both interpretations is the same. Hubble diagram Hubble's law can be easily depicted in a Hubble diagram in which the velocity of an object is plotted with respect to its distance from the observer. A straight line of positive slope on this diagram is the visual depiction of Hubble's law. Equals cosmological constant abandoned equals. After Hubble's discovery was published, Albert Einstein abandoned his work on the cosmological constant, which he had designed to modify his equations of general relativity to allow them to produce a static solution which, in their simplest form, model either an expanding or contracting universe. After Hubble's discovery that the universe was, in fact, expanding, Einstein called his faulty assumption that the universe is static his biggest mistake. On its own, general relativity could predict the expansion of the universe which could be experimentally observed and compared to his theoretical calculations using particular solutions of the equations he had originally formulated. In 1931, Einstein made a trip to Mount Wilson to thank Hubble for providing the observational basis for modern cosmology. The cosmological constant has regained attention in recent decades as a hypothesis for dark energy. Interpretation The discovery of the linear relationship between redshift and distance coupled with a supposed linear relation between recessional velocity and redshift, yields a straightforward mathematical expression for Hubble's law as follows. Where, is the recessional velocity, typically expressed in kilometer per second? HO is Hubble's constant and corresponds to the value of in the Friedman equations taken at the time of observation denoted by the subscript zero. This value is the same throughout the universe for a given Ku moving time is the proper distance from the galaxy to the observer, measured in megaparsks, in the three space defined by a given cosmological time, Hubble's law is considered a fundamental relation between recessional velocity and distance. However, the relation between recessional velocity and redshift depends on the cosmological model adopted, and is not established except for small redshifts. For distances d larger than the radius of the Hubble sphere RHS, objects recede at a rate faster than the speed of light. Since the Hubble constant is a constant only in space, not in time, the radius of the Hubble sphere may increase or decrease over various time intervals. The subscript zero indicates the value of the Hubble constant today. Current evidence suggests that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, meaning that, for any given galaxy, the recession velocity DDDT is increasing over time as the galaxy moves to greater and greater distances. However, the Hubble parameter is actually thought to be decreasing with time, meaning that if we were to look at some fixed distance D and watch a series of different galaxies pass that distance, later galaxies would pass that distance at a smaller velocity than earlier ones. Equals redshift velocity and recessional velocity equals Redshift can be measured by determining the wavelength of a known transition, such as hydrogen I plus or minus lines for distant quasars, and finding the fractional shift compared to a stationary reference. 
thus redshift is a quantity unambiguous for experimental observation. The relation of redshift to recessional velocity is another matter. For an extensive discussion, see Harrison. Redshift velocity, the redshift z is often described as a redshift velocity, which is the recessional velocity that would produce the same redshift if it were caused by a linear Doppler effect. This redshift velocity can easily exceed the speed of light. In other words, to determine the redshift velocity VRS, the relation is used. That is, there is no fundamental difference between redshift velocity and redshift, they are rigidly proportional, and not related by any theoretical reasoning. The motivation behind the redshift velocity terminology is that the redshift velocity agrees with the velocity from a low velocity simplification of the so-called FISO Doppler formula. Here, IO, IE are the observed and emitted wavelengths respectively. The redshift velocity VRS is not so simply related to real velocity at larger velocities, however, and this terminology leads to confusion if interpreted as a real velocity. Next. The connection between redshift or redshift velocity and recessional velocity is discussed. This discussion is based on Sartori. Recessional velocity, suppose r, t, is called the scale factor of the universe, and increases as the universe expands in a manner that depends upon the cosmological model selected. Its meaning is that all measured proper distances d, t, between co moving points increase proportionally to r. In other words, where TO is some reference time. If light is emitted from a galaxy at time T and received by us at TO, it is redshifted due to the expansion of space, and this redshift Z is simply. Suppose a galaxy is a distance D, and this distance changes with time at a rate DTD. We call this rate of recession the recession velocity VR. We now define the Hubble constant as. and discover the Hubble law. From this perspective, Hubble's law is a fundamental relation between the recessional velocity contributed by the expansion of space and the distance to an object. The connection between redshift and distance is a crutch used to connect Hubble's law with observations. This law can be related to redshift z approximately by making a Taylor series expansion. If the distance is not too large, all other complications of the model become small corrections and the time interval is simply the distance divided by the speed of light. Or, according to this approach, the relation CZ equals VR is an approximation valid at low redshifts, to be replaced by a relation at large redshifts that is model dependent. See velocity redshift figure. Equals observability of parameters equals, strictly speaking, neither B nor D in the formula are directly observable, because they are properties now of a galaxy, whereas our observations refer to the galaxy in the past at the time that the light we currently see left it. For relatively nearby galaxies, V and D will not have changed much, and V can be estimated using the formula where C is the speed of light. This gives the empirical relation found by Hubble. For distant galaxies, V cannot be calculated from Z without specifying a detailed model for how H changes with time. The redshift is not even directly related to the recession velocity at the time the light set out, but it does have a simple interpretation, is the factor by which the universe has expanded while the photon was traveling towards the observer. Equals expansion velocity versus relative velocity equals, in using Hubble's law to determine distances, only the velocity due to the expansion of the universe can be used. Since gravitationally interacting galaxies move relative to each other independent of the expansion of the universe, these relative velocities, called peculiar velocities, need to be accounted for in the application of Hubble's law. The finger of God effect is one result of this phenomenon. In systems that are gravitationally bound, such as galaxies or our planetary system, the expansion of space is a much weaker effect than the attractive force of gravity equals idealized Hubble's law equals, the mathematical derivation of an idealized Hubble's law for a uniformly expanding universe is a fairly elementary theorem of geometry and three-dimensional Cartesian Newtonian coordinate space, which, considered as a metric space, is entirely homogeneous and isotropic. Simply stated the theorem is this, any two points which are moving away from the origin, each along straight lines and with speed proportional to distance from the origin, 
will be moving away from each other with a speed proportional to their distance apart. In fact this applies to non-Cartesian spaces as long as they are locally homogeneous and isotropic. Specifically to the negatively and positively curved spaces frequently considered as cosmological models. An observation stemming from this theorem is that seeing objects recede from us on Earth is not an indication that Earth is near to a center from which the expansion is occurring, but rather that every observer in an expanding universe will see objects receding from them. Equals ultimate fate and age of the universe equals. The value of the Hubble parameter changes over time either increasing or decreasing depending on the value of the so-called deceleration parameter, which is defined by in a universe with a deceleration parameter equal to zero, it follows that h equals 1 per ton, where t is the time since the Big Bang. A non-zero, time-dependent value of simply requires integration of the Friedman equations backwards from the present time to the time when the Q-moving horizon's size was zero. It was long thought that Q was positive, indicating that the expansion is slowing down due to gravitational attraction. This would imply an age of the universe less than one per hour. For instance, a value for Q of one half would give the age of the universe as two slash, three hours. The discovery in 1998 that Q is apparently negative means that the universe would actually be older than one per hour. However, estimates of the age of the universe are very close to one per hour. Equals Olber's paradox equals. The expansion of space summarized by the Big Bang interpretation of Hubble's law is relevant to the old conundrum known as Olber's paradox, if the universe were infinite, static, and filled with a uniform distribution of stars, then every line of sight in the sky would end on a star, and the sky would be as bright as the surface of a star. However, the night sky is largely dark. Since the 17th century, Astronomers and other thinkers have proposed many possible ways to resolve this paradox, but the currently accepted resolution depends in part on the Big Bang theory and in part on the Hubble expansion. In a universe that exists for a finite amount of time, only the light of a finite number of stars has had a chance to reach us yet, and the paradox is resolved. Additionally, in an expanding universe, distant objects recede from us which causes the light emanating from them to be redshifted and diminished in brightness. Equals dimensionless Hubble parameter equals, instead of working with Hubble's constant, a common practice is to introduce the dimensionless Hubble parameter, usually denoted by H, and to write the Hubble's parameter HO as HA, 100 km R1 MPCA1, all the uncertainty relative of the value of HO being then relegated on H. If a subscript is presented after H, it refers to the value of H used in that text's preceding calculation, and is equal to HO slash 100. Currently H equals 0 0.678, which can be represented as H 0 0.678. This should not be confused with the dimensionless value of Hubble's constant, usually expressed in terms of Planck units, with current value of HO a, TP equals 1.18. 10 to 61. Determining the Hubble constant. The value of the Hubble constant is estimated by measuring the redshift of distant galaxies and then determining the distances to the same galaxies. Uncertainties in the physical assumptions used to determine these distances have caused varying estimates of the Hubble constant. Equals earlier measurement and discussion approaches equals. For most of the second half of the 20th century the value of was estimated to be between 50 and 90 slash mpc. The value of the Hubble constant was the topic of a long and rather bitter controversy between Gar copyright Raj de Vaucalers, who claimed the value was around 100, and Alan Sandage, who claimed the value was near 50. In 1996, a debate moderated by John Bach called between Gustav Tamman and Sidney Van Denberg was held in similar fashion to the earlier Shapley Curtis debate over these two competing values. This previously wide variance in estimates was partially resolved with the introduction of the ICDM model of the universe in the late 1990s. With the ICDM model observations of high redshift clusters at X ray and microwave wavelengths using the Suniave Zeldo Veach effect, measurements of anisotropies in the cosmic microwave background radiation, and optical surveys all gave a value of around 70 for the constant. More recent measurements from the Planck mission indicate a lower value of around 67. 
see table of measurements above for many recent and older measurements. Equals acceleration of the expansion equals a value for measured from standard candle observations of type Ia supernovae, which was determined in 1998 to be negative, surprised many astronomers with the implication that the expansion of the universe is currently accelerating. Derivation of the Hubble parameter, start with a Friedman equation. Where is the Hubble parameter, is the scale factor, g is the gravitational constant, is the normalized spatial curvature of the universe and equal to a 1, 0 or plus 1, and is the cosmological constant. Equals matter dominated universe equals, if the universe is matter dominated, then the mass density of the universe can just be taken to include matter so. Where is the density of matter today? We know for non-relativistic particles that their mass density decreases proportional to the inverse volume of the universe, so the equation above must be true. We can also define. So also, by definition. And. Where the subscript naught refers to the values today, and. Substituting all of this into the Friedman equation at the start of this section and replacing with gives. Equals matter and dark energy dominated universe equals, if the universe is both matter dominated and dark energy dominated, then the above equation for the Hubble parameter will also be a function of the equation of state of dark energy. So now. Where is the mass density of the dark energy? By definition, an equation of state in cosmology is, and if this is substituted into the fluid equation, which describes how the mass density of the universe evolves with time, then. If W is constant, then. Therefore, for dark energy with a constant equation of state W. If this is substituted into the Friedman equation in a similar way as before, but this time set, which assumes a spatially flat universe, then. If the dark energy derives from a cosmological constant such as that introduced by Einstein, it can be shown that. The equation then reduces to the last equation in the matter-dominated universe section, with set to zero. In that case the initial dark energy density is given by, and, if dark energy does not have a constant equation of state W, then. And to solve this, must be parameterized. For example if, giving. Other ingredients have been formulated recently. Units derived from the Hubble constant. Equals Hubble time equals, the Hubble constant has units of inverse time. The Hubble time th is simply defined as the inverse of the Hubble constant, that is. Equals 14.4 billion years. This is slightly different from the age of the universe 13.8 billion years. The Hubble time is the age it would have had if the expansion had been linear, and it is different from the real age of the universe because the expansion isn't linear. They are related by a dimensionless factor which depends on the mass-energy content of the universe, which is around 0.96 in the standard lambda CDN model. We currently appear to be approaching a period where the expansion is exponential due to the increasing dominance of vacuum energy. In this regime, the Hubble parameter is constant, and the universe grows by a factor each Hubble time. Over long periods of time, the dynamics are complicated by general relativity, dark energy, inflation, etc., as explained above. Equals Hubble length equals, the Hubble length or Hubble distance is a unit of distance in cosmology, defined as CHO or 1 a euro the speed of light multiplied by the Hubble time. It is equivalent to 4,228 million pasks or 13.8 billion light years. The Hubble distance would be the distance between the Earth and the galaxies which are currently receding from us at the speed of light, as can be seen by substituting d equals CHO into the equation for Hubble's law, V equals HOD. Equals Hubble volume equals. The Hubble volume is sometimes defined as a volume of the universe with a Ku moving size of CHO. The exact definition varies, it is sometimes defined as the volume of a sphere with radius CHO, or alternatively, a cube of side CHO. Some cosmologists even use the term Hubble volume to refer to the volume of the observable universe, although this has a radius approximately three times larger. See also Cosmology, Dark Energy, Dark Matter, Tests of General Relativity Notes References Hubble, 
E.P. The Observational Approach to Cosmology. Clarendon Press. LCCN 38,011,865. Kutner, M. Astronomy, A Physical Perspective. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-52927-1. Liddell, A. R. An Introduction to Modern Cosmology. John Wiley & Sons. ISBN 0-470-84835-9. Further reading, Friedman, W. L. Madel, B. F. The Hubble Constant. Annual Review of Astronomy and Astrophysics 48, 673. AR ZIF, 1004.1856. Bibcode, 2010 ARA and A4873FDOI, 10.1146 Annuary Vastro 082708-101829. External links, NASA's WAMP, Big Bang Expansion, The Hubble Constant, The Hubble Key Project, The Hubble Diagram Project, Merrifield, Michael. Hubble Constant. 60 Symbols. Brady Heron for the University of Nottingham.